there are two forces at work in the writing of The Kite Runner by Khalid Husseini. The Romantic and the Real. The book is set in Afghanistan. It was published two years after September 11th, and Husseini himself is from the country, though he moved to the United States when he was 15. As you can imagine, after the attacks on America, there was a lot of confusion and prejudice against Middle Eastern cultures in general. Afghanistan and its people were obviously put in the crosshairs in the fallout. Ignorance tends to be at the heart of most hatred, but in this case, it was particularly extreme, in part because of the enormity of the attack, but also because most Americans had probably never even heard of Afghanistan. It was just this unknown foreign sounding place that their imaginations could populate with the cast of Black Hawk Down. As a result, it would seem Hosseini set out with two mission objectives when writing his novel. One, to create a portrait of the Afghanistan he knew, albeit in a somewhat nostalgic, romanticised kind of way, to help engender a more balanced outlook of his homeland. And two, demonstrate the extremely harsh realities that the country has endured, particularly in regards to how brutally its people were treated under the occupation by those who would go on to attack America. To a large extent, I think he succeeds on both fronts, but it's interesting to examine how the two objectives pan out when they're attempted together. The first part of The Kite Runner is set during the protagonist's childhood. Amir, who has a difficult relationship with his father and a tight bond with her servant. A boy named Hassan, who is of an ethnic minority that gets treated quite badly in Afghanistan. Together, they live in 1970s Kabul, a city that even back then seemed to be going through some tumultuous times. However, because this part of the story is witnessed through children's eyes, we get to enjoy it in an almost idealised way. Amir's father can be hard on him, yes, but there's no doubt as to the potential affection between them. We see lavish family feasts and beautiful city festivals, such as the kite running competition from which the novel gets its name. It's an account that does a lot to diffuse the image of Afghanistan as a barren desert, devoid of culture and civilization. That said, even in the course of these idyllic years, Hosseini does a lot to outline the reality of the troubles ahead. There are abusive soldiers in the city, the threat of the Russians is ever present, and the idea of a more extreme form of Islam taking root is considered with dismay. Even so, the harshness of the world first creeps into the narrative through Amir's friendship with the servant boy, Hassan. The two are thick as thieves to be sure, but the inequality between them brings out a mean streak in Amir. Without understanding why, he feels compelled to play tricks on him, demands that he eats dirt to prove his loyalty, and fails to stand up for the boy when he's bullied. To put it simply, the subservient status of Hassan leads to Amir detesting him for what appears to be a weakness, then detesting himself for taking advantage of it, which in a vicious cycle leads to him abusing Hassan once more. It's a striking portrait of a child who doesn't understand his own behaviour, which stands in stark contrast to some of the more saturine aspects of the work. This all takes place in the first part of the novel, but it's a juxtaposed tone that continues throughout the story's run. Without giving too much away, we witness the characters' lives as they escape to America. It's often said that the United States is a boiling pot of cultures, which for me usually conjures up the image of a bustling apartment building at the turn of the 19th century. But I never really considered that in the boiling process, a lot of what makes a culture so special can get a little lost as they're simmered down to something that can be accepted in the never-ending expanse of the American suburbs. In this regard, it was cool to learn about the Afghan population's countless flea market stalls in New York of the 1980s, because I imagine if they haven't already faded away, they will eventually. At the same time, within this era of the book's events, a romance story and cancer plot are covered with all of the heartstring pulling you'd expect from an award-baiting movie. That is until, the reality of the world creeps back into the narrative once again, and Amir is forced to face the truly atrocious conditions of Afghanistan in the lead-up to 9-11. So, in the final review, does it all work together? Well, oddly enough, I'm reminded of one of the jokes from the third Naked Gun film in which the Oscar nominations are being announced. The nominees for Best Supporting Actress are Mary Lou Retton, Fatal Affair, One Woman's Ordeal to Overcome the Death of Her Cat, 
set against the background of the Hindenburg disaster. Morgan Fairchild, final proposal. One courageous pioneer woman's triumphant victory over bulimia, set against the background of the Donner Party crossing. Shannon Doherty, basic analysis. One woman's triumph over a yeast infection, set against the background of the tragic Buffalo Bill season of 1991. As you can see from the clip, they're each a different genre of movie set against the backdrops of various historical periods. The joke being, I suppose, that it can be a cheap way to lend your story a degree of gravitas. It allows the director easy access to settings that are already primed for drama, and it allows the audience to feel educated while enjoying all the usual twists and turns of a movie plot. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, you could say. I myself have usually preferred actual historical accounts, but that doesn't mean I don't see the power of attaching fiction to the narrative. Empire of the Sun, It So Happens is one of my favourite books, which is a fictionalised memoir of J.G. Ballard's childhood experience as a prisoner of the Japanese in World War II. As for Khaled Husseini's take on the genre, I'm still not sure if his attempt to merge the romantic and the real worked, but I do know I liked them both when considered on their own, with the realistic aspects being of particular note. The book serves as both an antidote for the more ignorant stereotypes regarding Afghanistan and a sober warning of the challenges it still has to overcome. If you've read the book then let me know what you thought in the comments below, and if you want to learn a little more about J.G. Ballard then check out my essay on his science fiction novels. It's actually the first video I ever recorded and it kind of sounds like I'm being strangled while doing it but maybe you'll find that amusing in its own way. Until then, 